What's up guys, Justin here with DCGessentials.com. In today's video, we're gonna check out a brand new add-on for creating realistic forests inside of Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so Forest Station is a brand new add-on from B Production. So B Production is the same group that brought us the vegetation add-on, grass blade, transportation, and gardener. Um, and this particular add-on is specifically designed to help us create realistic trees inside of Blender. I will link to this in the notes down below. But basically what this is, is this is an add-on containing 3D scanned, highly detailed trees for use in Blender. Currently there's 35 3D trees available to use from this add-on. On. Um, note that there are options in here for both HD and low poly. So you can use these either with the HD trees in your foreground or low poly in the background. Future updates are included in this add-on. So in the next versions, they're gonna be adding even more trees. So you'll be able to access those in the future once they're added. And so there's a number of different cool features in this, but probably one of the biggest is just the fact that they're using the 3D scanning for the trunks, which allows them to create really realistic trees. You can see all of the trees that they have included on their page in the Blender Market, which again, I will link to in the notes down below. All right, so let's take a look at, at the way this works inside of Blender. So first off, you wanna make sure that you go into your preferences once you've uh, purchased and downloaded the add-on. Make sure that you've installed it in your add-ons manager. And so you just wanna make sure that you've enabled forestation right here. And so once you've enabled that, you can tap the N key to get a forestation tab on the right hand side of the page. And so notice how you've got options in here for um, the different seasons, which we can take a look at in a second, as well as options for high poly and low poly, as well as where this is located in your model. So once we've selected those, so for example, I'm gonna place this based on the 3D cursor. You can, tr you can click on this option right here and this is gonna show you all the trees that are currently contained inside of this. And so notice how these trees have kind of a little person scale model next to them. So you can see the size of the trees that are contained in here. But let's say we were to add maybe this Chinese elm right here. So if we click on add tree, that's gonna add this tree right here inside of your scene. And notice that we had low or we had high poly selected, so it's gonna bring in that high quality geometry. All right, so when you're working with the trees, there's a few things you need to know. The first thing is if you wanna move the tree around, make sure that you're selecting the leaves rather than the base piece right here. So if I move this around, notice the tree's moving with it, but if I select the base piece, then it's gonna move around by itself. So you wanna make sure that you've selected the leaves in order to move these around. So a few other things about this. So first off, um, you can randomize the tree by clicking on the randomize button with the selected right here. So notice how this is going to bring in or kind of adjust the leaves and everything else. So that's gonna give you randomization of your trees. There's also a function in here to snap to ground. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna take your tree and it's going to move it down until it intersects with something on the ground. So notice how, I mean, this is pretty simple because this is a flat plane, but it'll basically move your object so that the origin point hits whatever's beneath it right here. All right, and so if you wanna change the seasons, right? So if you have multiple versions of your trees right here, you can just click on these options right here. So you can toggle between winter, autumn, spring. Now one weird thing about this, and I have no idea why, I have to click in here and hit the enter key in order for that change to get incorporated. I have no clue what's causing that, but notice how I can toggle between those really easily. Now one thing you probably want to be aware of is when you do duplicate your tree or create a different tree, right? Notice how both of these are changing right now. So if I switch this to winter, the other tree is changing as well. So if you don't want that to be the case, you probably need to come in here and make the uh, data its own, right? So you just need to click on this in order to make this unique. And so then, now if I make a change to one of these, if I hit the enter key, then it's only gonna adjust this tree it's not gonna adjust this tree right here. So you can set these up separately if you decide that you wanna do that. Most of the time you wanna leave them all linked together though because you're probably going to be changing all of your trees at once. So another thing to note is you also have options in here for um, adding animations to your trees. So let's say for example that you wanted to animate the leaves in here. I'm gonna jump back into layout mode. Um, let's say that we wanted these to animate and move right? So if I click on play right now, nothing's happening. However, if I come in here and I check the box for animated leaf, what that's going to do is that's going to allow me to add a wind preset to my leaves. So let's say we wanted this to move with a light breeze like this. So if I click on play, notice how now we're going to get movement 
in our leaves right here. So you can use this to render out those uh, moving leaves inside your scene. Um, one thing to note about that, and you can adjust the speed and the strength by the way, but one thing to note about that is let's say that you do have this tree and you duplicate it over here. And we'll go ahead and randomize this. But if I was to click the play button right here, this animation isn't going to look as good as the other animation. And what we need to do is whenever we duplicate this, we just wanna click on the button for retarget animation. So when you have this selected, right, you just wanna click on the retarget animation button right here. That way it's gonna retarget the animation to your new tree, which is going to make the animation look better. So now if I move this, notice how I'm getting a lot better result in here. And it is a little bit slow. Um, this is a lot of stuff that it's trying to move around. So just be aware that that is something that you may have to deal with. And so one other thing to note with this add-on is you need to make sure to get the micro displacement to show up so that you get the best possible result. You need to make sure that inside of your render properties, a, that you're set to cycles, but B, that you've set your feature set to experimental. That's going to allow us on the trunk to activate adaptive subdivision, right? So adaptive subdivision is gonna allow this to do the micro displacement inside of your scene. So you wanna make sure that you've toggled that on for the best results. The other thing to be aware of is inside of your viewport, um, you can adjust the rate of subdivision that goes on in the viewport um, by adjusting these values right here, right? So notice at the moment that we've got viewport subdivision and it kind of defaults to eight. Lower values are gonna give you a better result, but then your render is going to dice this all the way down to one. So your render result is gonna look a lot better than your viewport result. But we're gonna go ahead and set our viewport result to something like two. Note that if this starts running really slow, you may wanna change this back up to something a little bit higher. But then if you render this out, note that you're gonna get that really nice um, micro displacement subdivided mesh in here for your high poly results. So I will link to this add-on on this page. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this add-on. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.